Happy uh, holiday. I hope everybody is uh, doing all right. I had a good three-day weekend. And let's get ready for this fire episode. Yeah. I'm so, man, it was so good. I am a little mad at how it ended. I'm like, damn, that was so good. They could have made that a second season. They, but we could. Go- they, they could. I think it's still a chance of doing that, Jay. I really do. They can show it like Oz now. We had the Wire remake. Now let's do Oz and show them in the pen. You know what I'm saying? Especially <laughs> considering especially considering the way it went off with Wayne Stank and Jenkins. Woo! He, was he was separated from Gen Pop and he was basically isolated because he knew everybody was going to get a piece of that ass. Right. So they could easily do a new season chronicling how he get that ass beat. Right. And let him go to gym pop. Yeah. And you can cry, you can chronicle G Money who went and got himself a damn R. Kelly haircut at the end. <laughs> and, and he looks like he's trying to be a Muslim. I know, right? <laughs> beat by my brother. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Find a call. Find a call. Yeah. Beat by. Right. Okay. I don't All right. eat that pork, my brother. I don't eat pork. I don't do pork. I don't right. eat that swine. No pork you on know? the fork, brother. What's up, no. man? Brother, man. How you doing, man? Black man. That, that's right. Hey, I, I, I am the black man, but I don't eat that <laughs> and, I, and I don't touch that devil's women's either. I you know. know the about. white man is the devil. Don't you know when <laughs> things come around, they gonna be our slaves. <laughs> yeah, but... It's about to be that kind of night. But ladies and gentlemen, let's figure out where the hell. Moochie, where you at? We want to know. I'm, 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 I'm in the Pokemon's y'all. Oh snap! Oh, Poking so them nose, got you. Got to get the nose poked. Okay. okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so skiing up all the skiing. Okay. Skiing. I can't. Hey, Moochie, I was just about to tell them about the same thing you just typed. Uh, Something wrong yeah, with I my. Yeah, see the YouTube chat. Yeah, something wrong with it on mine too. Okay. I'll try. I'll try to figure out what's going on in a okay. minute. Um, you guys just bear with me. No but problem. But ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at some of the action that went down in this great, compelling, ripping TV show. Oh, the glasses off. In. Look at Moochie all relaxed. Gone. Oh, I know. Mucha, you really got me wanting to know what the hell going on over there. You're taking off glasses and you can't <laughs> all your teeth. Smile and look at them giggles. She's, I know. She didn't got a glow. So, yeah. Jay, her smile's so big, she kissing her earlobes. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm, I'm just, look, I'm enjoying the scenery. I know, that's Mucha, right. Turn your turn my camera down. Turn no. your camera down so we can make sure ain't nobody underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. But even the Office of Civil Rights, as high-minded as we think ourselves to be, is still a part of the Justice Department. But then everything in the Baltimore report is about a symptom. Beginning with the second term, Holder told all the U.S. attorneys to reduce the federal intake of drug defendants. So instead of fixing the laws, we just quietly work around them until we can't? Now we're out. Trump is in. And Jeff Sessions wants to arrest everyone he can for fucking marijuana possession. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. Jeff Sessions, man. Who was he? Uh, that wasn't Elmer Fudd. Who was he? He remind me of. It's been a while. I can't remember. Uh, Jeff Sessions was the attorney, the first attorney general under um, President Trump. Who yeah. Accused himself because Trump was too crooked. So right. they're out to tell you just how crooked politics is. If Jeff Sessions, who was a crook himself, said that Donald Trump. It's too crooked for me, and I'm going to recuse myself. Right, right. I'm trying to remember what he reminded me of. (laughs) There is just no, no recourse, no, no hope if we're going to put our hope in things of the government. And Jay, I'll come to you first, my man. How did you feel about Nicole having that conversation with the Department of Justice inside the Civil Rights Division, letting you know? that not only did Barack Obama's attorney general didn't really change the law, try to make you work around it, but then Trump's attorney general comes in and wanted to throw everybody in jail for damn near jaywalking with a blunt. Talk to us, Jay. Yeah, man, it just shows the attitudes and the differences on how they look at crime. 
So Eric Holder, Barack Obama, both two black men, they lived, of course, their life as a black man before being in that position. So they understand how policing can go wrong, you know. And so a lot of people clogging up the court system for a joint or, you know, a, you know, minor drug offenses is slowing down the system for people with serious crimes and people that police should be arresting. One example is in Chicago, at least back when I was younger, if they'd have pulled you over and found a joint, they'd have just took it. Um, they might have smoked it looking at this now with like Wayne Jenkins, who knows, but they'd have took it or maybe destroyed it right then and there. They wouldn't take you in for a joint. Whereas in Indianapolis or in Indiana, when I first was here, I know people that went because they found seeds in the ashtray, not even a, a roach or anything, seeds. And they got to go to court for that. Yeah. And I mean, I am not playing. They tried to give him probation for like two years over that. But he had a lawyer and that's what, you know, got that thrown off the record and thrown out. But had he not had money, he could have had two years probation for some damn seeds. And then, you know, that's a good way to get you knocked up. If they catch you with seeds again or anything else, you go to jail because you was on probation and then you violate probation. And now we got you. So that's a, that's one of the tricks in the book. But you got Barney Fife coming in here, a.k.a. Jeff Sessions. And they approach crime just like when we saw later, not to jump too far ahead, when she went to the courtroom, uh, we saw ain't nothing but black folks in there. And he oh, probably see like assembly line. Exactly, like a factory straight to prison. And that's how they see and approach crime, as in those are bad people and criminals, lock them up, get them off the street, put them on the plantation, do whatever you need to do to get them out of our way so we can live our life and to hell with them. So they damn sure don't see equality in the citizens or that's, well, not or, and that's why they don't police equally, you know. Moochie, yes. Nicole Steele said it best herself. She, she, in the same scene J Mo was talking about when they were running black dudes through there like an assembly line, she basically said that the rich and influence have this thing set up where everybody who's poor, your ass is basically going to jail. Yeah. You, 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 you basically F, as some, I've heard some people say. So talk to yeah. us about that, Moochie. It, it's, it's like a, we already know, I know this is a little off topic. But we already know that the prison system is set up now by a private industry where they need bodies. Yeah, because as and a corporation, that's how they make money. It's just helping us, the assembly will I move like a well, yep. a well oiled machine. Yep. But, Mooch, this is what I want to know. This, this, this is what I want to know. No Anglo Saxon that claims to be a Republican can tell me the answer to this, okay? Black people make up 13.4% of the population. Yep. In the United States. Right. I already know Ask me doing. what makes up 74.2% of the males in jail. Ask me, Mooshi. Mm -hmm. What, what? Black it's folks. Black men. Black, it's black over right. half. It's over half. Yeah, black, black folks. men make up 70% of the people in prison, yet we as a whole race of people are only 13.2% and there's more black women than men. Right. So please explain to me how the levers of justice and the, and the, the penal system is leveraging its duties fairly with those statistics. Because I can guarantee you right now, a lot of why we've been vilified is because it's projections of what their asses are doing behind closed doors. Exactly. So talk to me about that, Moochie. We, we, they, they always make the black man a villain because our black men are kings. So they gotta, they wanna take them down a peg. 
so they can feel superior to them. Mm -hmm. They intimidated. And, and they, they make it where it is the scales are already unbalanced. Mm. And, yeah. they, and they or, this was orchestrated years ago. Yeah. Once yeah. they took the black man out of the house. Let me. Once uh, they saw that we, once they, they, once they saw that black people were financially making more, more money around in the in the early eighties, between like 83, 80, 82, 83, before crack came out, they did. This was all orchestrated. I don't care what nobody says because back then, the average black family was making more than than some of these white families. They had good jobs and, and things of that nature. It's a lot of things that was orchestrated to 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 make this prison system become an assembly line of um falling in minorities especially black men hmm. yeah let me uh just uh add a little something to that real quick too so um you know before martin luther king started preaching about equality and, and all of that um white men made up the majority of people in prison once jim crow ended and a lot of civil rights were passed that began the backlash and mm -hmm. started putting black men in prison because they no longer could segregate legally and it became uh, more black men slowly in jail than whites and you could even you know people just listening can google and look it up um, just to double check and one thing I was just looking at the comments real quick you know uh, Mo, what is his name Dwayne he's saying that they're blaming it on Trump as usual he's I guess Dwayne you're not realizing this is in 2016 the show is what they're addressing it's not today <laughs> he makes it seem as if people like the show is current right now um, this is the laws and the policy that they put in place. So it's not blaming. This is what they did. This is what they said. It's not a, you know, I guess he's a Trump supporter. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that. It's nobody making up things. And that was the policy that they implemented. You know, um, Jeff Sessions, that's what he did. You know, nobody's making up anything. So, you mm. know. You gotta, you gotta double check that, brother. So, mm. so Mooch, I'm gonna swing your way on this. This episode gave us a full circle on your boy Sean Suter. Mm. Oh Lord, poor fella. Lord, and I remember that in the news when I now. saw it on I'm there. Some... It made me remember that. I, I do too. Yeah. I did too. I remembered it. I remember yeah. it in the news too. So Moochie. They go through this episode talking about Suter, right? And they're telling him he's not on the watch list per se, but they do want him to give an account of his time he spent with Wayne Jenkins. They wanted to tell the story on, you know, in front of the grand jury. Right. Moochie, this boy is sweating bullets, shitting bricks. He don't know what to do with himself. And it gets to a point, Moochie, where he starts thinking that Wayne Jenkins and Rayum are going to attempt to blame that planet drugs on Suter. That's what they're planning on doing. That's what Rayum is planning on doing. And for whatever the reason, Suter felt so bad about that Moochie, he felt so bad that it led him to doing this act right here. Then I give the floor to you, Moochie. Before I give it to you, let me say this. Somebody on Instagram asked me, Lamont, why didn't he just commit suicide versus pretending and having them do and having them say that someone shot him? And I had to explain to them, if he would have committed suicide, his family wouldn't have got no life insurance money. They wouldn't have got none of the pension he's worked all these years to get. 
they would have been cut off from benefits. Yep. Right. Having said that, Moochie, the floor is yours. Okay, and that's exactly what I was going to say. He brought this out. If he dies in the line of duty, he still get his family will still reap the benefits of being being um related to a police officer. Yep. They would get the pension, and then they have those other things where they pay for their college funds and all of that other right. stuff. Mm-hmm. And I believe he had a lot of children, but I really don't want to believe that he did this act. Yeah, he. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you was done. My bad. Yeah, uh. I, I don't want to believe that he did this. And but the writing's on the wall. That the way they're showing it, and mm-hmm. I, I'm trying. I'm wrestling with that. Go ahead, you go, Jay. <laughs> um, yeah, what Lamont said earlier was 100% correct about why he did that. But he tweaked too hard, though, because they told him he wasn't a suspect. Wayne Jenkins was already buried. You didn't even really have to throw no dirt on him. That dude was a mud baby right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, he, and he I even, think he was afraid of losing his job. Yeah, he said that that was so stupid. Am I going to lose my job for this? That made him look guilty when he said that. I'm like, why would you say that? Like, he was tweaking, man. Hard. Off of just taking, <laughs> like, they didn't even know about the money. He could have just said, you know what I'm saying? They didn't even know hey. about that money part. <laughs> You like that tweet? Jay, the rent is too damn high, man. <laughs> Do want to keep a job? The rent is too damn high, brother. True. I want my job too. <laughs> I know, right? But like, man, you can find another job. But some of these cops, that job is their life. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. But at the same time, they wasn't even talking about the case with the money. They was just talking about the drug thing. And he was like, "Look, other officers, fa- you know, check the car." They didn't find nothing. When I went, I was able to find it. I didn't personally see him throw it in there, but he did oh, tell me to go and double check the car one I more want to time. Say something about that part. Go ahead. Right go before ahead. Sean walks to that Acura, it's a uniform cop walking away from you. Right. So he probably didn't plant the drugs there. But his no, mind. He didn't. He didn't plant. I don't think he planted the drugs there. It was somebody, a uniform cop. That did right. It. He didn't do it. They right, showed him right. walking away. When he's walking back to that vehicle, if you watch it the first time, they show a person, a uniform cop, walking away from that car. Right. Mm-hmm. And even the person that was on the curb that was in, that belonged that the car belonged to, he seen the uniform cop go there. That's why he shouted out like that. Right. But uh, it, it's not on him. You're right. He didn't do it. They. That's why he told him to go find it because he was clean and didn't know nothing about it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They kind of set him up, actually, to put his name on the paperwork and make okay. it seem like he honestly found some stuff when he didn't. You know what I'm saying? And, right. uh, and yeah. you know, he could have just been, like, told the story, left it at that, don't bring up the part when they stole the money, when they uh, went to the, you know what I'm saying, uh, car wash, and leave it at that, man. Like, he, some of these cops, I have to give it to them. They real straight laced. So, even though, like, he was a cool dude, when it come down to, to lying and doing, like, shady stuff on the stand or whatever... You know, getting questioned by cops, he was tweaking, you know, because he didn't even have to yeah. say, am I going to lose my job for this when they was questioning him? Because you saw them look at each other when he said that, like, what the hell this dude know? What he do? You know what I'm saying? So he started making exactly great picture that made him look bad saying that that was dumb. And then he started tweaking all day long when the lawyer was texting him and trying to call him. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, you got to be calm under pressure. And they wasn't looking for him. Just say what you had to say and move on. Like the dude said after he died, we really didn't need him no way. (laughs) Which they did. Yeah. Yeah. No, and they, they was trying to explain well, why 
with somebody assassinate him. Right. He's gonna get buried him even more. Right. The thing with Suter, he, this dude, I'm with you, Moochie. He was so afraid of, and and I think they highlighted it. He was so afraid of not being able to be the provider for his family. Because do you remember? You guys remember in this episode, he woke up, looked next to his wife, goes, looks at his son, and he's thinking to myself, "If I lose my job, how am I going to take care of my family?" Right. So I think that he felt that if he went and testified. Even if he done things by the book, let's say that the, the, the feds don't get him, the police probably gonna turn on him and eventually make him lose his job. And True. his family's gonna be out. So he was like, look, let me do the admirable thing, take my life, pretend like somebody did it and my family can be taken care of. I right. think that's what was going through his brain. He was like, he was thinking to himself, I can't take on neither one of the people I'm in between. I'm in between the feds and I'm in between this, the Baltimore Police Department. Yeah. If I tell the truth on the Baltimore Police Department, I'm toast. If I lie to the feds and get caught, I'm toast. And he has no idea that Ram and Wayne and all them is about to try to blame it on him. So then he would have been forced to tell the truth. He would have had to tell the truth to defend his own name. And then as crooked as that police department was, as we've learned, they probably would have shunned my brother. They probably would, and that's what he was thinking. I think that's what he was thinking. Yeah, they that police culture is no joke. And if they think that you a snitch or you was doing something that they don't that go against the you know police bro code, so to speak, then they would have put him out to pasture. Or if he needed help, nobody would have been there or want to be his partner. Now I see some right. people say that he was killed. And to play devil's advocate, all right, okay. we really don't know what he was looking at and doing in his house. You know what I'm saying? If he looked at the pictures or if he was worried, it was good for the show. It's probably something he did, but we really don't know, playing devil's advocate. We really don't know what he was thinking, of course, and he didn't leave a note, so we can't say for sure, but it goes to that testimony of that cop he was with. Did that cop shoot him? Because they never found a suspect. They they never saw anybody. So if that cop was that was with him, who wasn't, didn't know nothing about Wayne Jenkins and them, at least as far as we know, because mm -hmm. they, they pretty much brought in everybody that had something to do with them. As we later saw, they put a lot of people in jail for all kind of reasons. You know what I'm saying? It went high up the food chain and low. So that dude didn't have nothing to do with it as far as we know. So why would he kill Suter? Most of the guys in his unit in Homicide didn't know nothing about it from what we saw. So it ain't like Wayne could have did it. He was in prison or any of those guys. And what Suter could have said really ain't nothing compared to what all the cops said. They were singing like a jaybird. And oh, Lord, we about to get to them. And yeah. I, I, mentioned, I mentioned it last week about the documentary about Sean, Sean Suter. It's called The Slow Hustle. I wanted to wait till everybody saw the last episode in order to watch that. You have to watch it. It's showing that, it's showing the, the like, did he... Did he commit the S word or he, did he die in the line of duty? And they're mm -hmm. showing you two, they're showing you different pros Angles, and cons yeah. of how it is and how it should be. I believe, I, I, I strongly believe he died in the line of duty. Really? I'm going to have to watch that. I got to watch I that. Believe, I believe it was a cover up. The person mm -hmm. that he was with was a new, per, a new detective. Okay. He wasn't with his, us his usual guy, the black dude with the beard. Right. He's in the um documentary, and it's saying a lot. Um, C Mac mentioned it. It was somebody else also that mentioned it too. Tamika, yeah, she mentioned it. And I, like I said once again, I did talk about it last week. And you meet his family. You meet how his family is crusading for him. Maybe he and used that rookie. Maybe he did it because that rookie detective didn't know 
what was going on or didn't know how to look for a suspect properly yet and all of that so he was like stay on the corner and no. do that okay they're not even explaining that whole thing it they the, the way the way the show made it look it made it look like he took the guy out right it, what you mean he took the guy out it, the way the the the, 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 co the other cop that was with him it made it look like he that short suitor took him out for the next thing but you know how when you in homicide the next person up is the next person up and he happened to be in the station so it was random and, and his and his partner had something to do that's why his partner didn't go so maybe he was thinking about it randomly got lucky and decided let me go do the, i don't know i ain't see it so i can't really say you know what I, i'm saying I, you got I, more information than me on that so but you definitely got me wanting to check it out it's on hbo yeah hbo i'm yeah. gonna check it out yeah but the, I, I, I really don't think he did it wow I wanna, okay I, I just feel like he i feel like he went this far and wasn't really messing with them like that but he was like, look, I'm not going to tell one of these dudes because the blue wall is silence, right? But I'm Pretty not going to be in that. And that's what it seemed like he was doing the whole time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I definitely haven't gonna even watch seen that. the documentary. And Me I neither. Think yeah. I, I, that, that's how I, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to think he's doing it. I, I feel like Wayne Jenkins had that, that bounty hunter dude and he was dirty too. They he was already anybody. locked up by then, though. Yeah, but they still could have got anybody to do that. That's true. He could have probably yeah. reached they connections, was working, but they was working with different, different um, dealers and stuff. Everybody, they everybody, got anybody they, to yeah. do that. I just don't think yeah. Shooter test. They said his testimony wasn't that more valuable. I don't think he was that valuable to want to take him out. Now, if it would have been uh, Gondo or Ram, they buried. Wayne Jenkins you know what I'm saying if they could have got one of them and they died like that then that's different because they really the ones that really put the finishing touches on them and I was uh, a, I think I think that I think that these three clowns Ray yeah Young, Gondo yeah Gondo yeah. And, and them yeah I think they laid the foundation for getting Wayne but the okay. real person that put the nail in the coffin, his boy, the icing on a fat man cake, was this man yeah. right here. And when and they he came was to him, he was so. When I tell y'all, y'all ever want to see a mockingbird sing? This yeah. is the face of it. He, that MF was singing like you a ain't lying. right before the buffet. He yeah. was ready to tell them everything. He even said, Y'all missed the coke. Million. He said, Y'all yeah, missed it. like Tweety Bird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He said the coke, the coke was where it was in the in the baseboard of the radiator. Yeah, man, man, I was said, like, what? Bro, I wouldn't have said bro. that one. He he didn't told too much. Alexa, you know why? Because he's stop. A man. He got his own business. He can still do the bounty hunting when he come he's out. A bells bombing. He can he's still bells do bells, bells bombs once he gets out. Yep. Now he why did they tell us? This was just icing on the cake for him. Why didn't they tell us how much time he got? How long he going to jail? When he the point? Out? Because I got I got a beef. I got a beef about some of these sentences. Now I do got a beef, and we'll get there in a minute. Yeah, but, um, I do too. I want to say something else about um about old um white milk dud <laughs> Benny he Blanco. Didn't do everything. Yeah, he he did put the icing on that on that cupcake. Um, and even Wayne, when he saw the newspaper that he was singing and cooperating, yeah, he was, he was like, damn. Okay. He yeah, he yeah. knew it was over then. Um, and I do got a problem. I'm, I'm with you. We get to it about they sentencing because, oh, man, I don't know if it was worth it, but let's get to it. <laughs> I'm right with you. Yeah. So. They, they, they're they interviewing all the Gun Trace Task Force brothers, right? And basically, and I'm going to come to you with this one, Mucci, the feds wanting to know, okay, what more did you got on Wayne? And that's when they all start talking about Wayne was a different dude. Wayne was legitimately a fucking drug dealer working within the police. Everybody was stealing money. You know, not only us. Pretty much everybody in the police department steal money. Now, ladies and gentlemen, everybody is a human. 
And when you think MF is just sitting there looking at all that cash, if you to this day don't think that some of them ain't skimming something off the top, do yourself a favor, take some Excedrin and go to sleep. <laughs> And right. There ain't nothing sacred on this planet when it comes to people being next to money and power. Nothing and no one. What keeps you sacred is being caught and the rules of law and executing those rules of law. But anyway, they all came out and said what made this cat different was the fact that he was dealing drugs. So, Muchi, what does it say that everybody, all three, all four of these brothers, corroborated pretty much the same story and Jenkins up until that point was sitting there lying through his teeth. He even survived this little skirmish right here in jail. Talk to us, Moochie. He survived that. He went through the other thing and was like, well, I'm not the person you're looking for. Mm-hmm. What word on the street is that you're a dirty cop. Yeah. Well, yep. Every single one of your cases is getting thrown out. Yep. So it's like the like I said it earlier, the writing's on the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a dirty cop and he's yep. a drug dealer. Right, right. And, and, and what I want to know is, Mucci, how in his how in his mind did he do the mental gymnastics to think that he's a legit cop? Like I said last week, people will somehow or another in their mind justify their behavior with anything. So for him as long as he's taking the drugs away from the drug dealers, it's okay for him to repurpose those same drugs, seal them back up in the cocaine valve, and then go sell them himself. That's taking it. No, stop it. Stop yeah. it. Just stop it. Jump on in there, Moochie. Finish your point. You know what the crazy part about that was? What is it? Was when he was talking to Jamel and <laughs> when they were talking about that last Heist they was gonna do at the strip club. Right. At, the, at, at, the, strip at, club. at the strip club, and he was saying, "You hear how they saying I'm dirty?" And they laughed <laughs> like, "Ain't you?" He didn't he even realize. Like, is this dude serious? Right. Yeah. But, but Moochie and Jay, that's how some of them do. That is classic narcissism. Classic yeah. narcissism. Projecting denial, acting as if the behaviors you're not you're doing. You're not doing them, and you deny it, and then you project it on other people. You know, yeah. making up gymnastics to get away with it. Jump on in there, Jay. Yeah, yeah. So not too long ago, I was talking about uh, something like this with some people on my channel about how cops steal money, and a lot of people think that's not a crime. And of course they know technically it's a crime Because we had to go back and forth But they were saying from the point that they do it so much And get away with it is not a crime But a lot of cops think Because you a drug dealer or whatever I can take this money and it's nothing wrong with it Because you don't deserve it You didn't earn it And taking your money is not a crime Like as you alluded to People justify all kind of stuff So they justify you shouldn't have had it in the first place. You're not going to do nothing positive with it. You don't need it. So I'm going to take it. And I'm a hard-working police officer. I deserve it more than you. These are the things that they justify and how they justify it in their head. Of course, he's Jay, not doing nothing more positive Jay. with it his damn self. Go ahead. Let me say, Jay, let me say this to you because it, it goes well with your point. A lot of people look at our government structure and that's how they form their justifications for doing wrong. Okay? And let me give you two examples. One of them goes right with what you're talking about. Number one, every, there are so many businessmen out there who quick to tell you they love Jesus, they walk the life of Christ and all that, but cheating on their fucking taxes. The two don't go together, but they'll justify it because they earn that money. Government shouldn't take it. Okay, that's number one. But right with what you're saying, Jay, in terms of these cops justifying taking that money, when the federal government arrests a drug dealer and they seize his money and confiscate his money and drugs, me and you done talked about this last week. These are ill-gotten gains that the government then turns around and tax the dude on. Right. He, 
the government tax you yep. on something that is an ill-gotten gain and shouldn't be gained anyway, yep. but they're going to make money off of something that's illegal and put you in jail and then confiscate your money. Right. So I can easily see why the police department be like, you know what? The government do it. So I, can, I do it too. Right, right. Back to you, Jay. Yeah, like you say, they're going to tax you. That's how they got a lot of people for tax evasion from Capone to many other cents. Mm -hmm. Um, because, okay, we can't prove certain things, but we know that you got all this property and money and you don't have any way to show that you earned it. So we're going to tax you for not paying taxes every year and we're going to confiscate all that stuff. And oh. I was talking to a cop not too long ago and she was saying that all the stuff they confiscate, whether it's property or whatever, they sell the property, the money goes mm -hmm. into the police fund. Or they use it to buy equipment and stuff. So either way, they going to keep your money. It's just, are you keeping it personally, like Wayne Jenkins? Or are you going to let us all keep it and put it in our retirement fund or buy equipment? And that's the only difference. And they all going to justify the same way as in, you a drug dealer, you shouldn't have had it. You wasn't doing nothing positive with it. It's just that, are you going to let the big organization, you know what I'm saying, overall justify it? Or are you going to justify it personally and take it? You know, and that's the crazy part. And Wayne Jenkins, when he was even doing at the end his little speech to the group, and they saying we getting guns off the street and we making the difference, this, that, and the other. He didn't say we taking, because he was saying we taking guns and, and drugs and putting it on the table. He didn't say money and putting it on the table. They putting it in them pockets. You know what I'm saying? He left that out. Yeah. And truth be told, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have police because I definitely believe we do. But how much of a difference did they really make? Taking off a hundred some guns off the street sounds great, but that ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? How many people live in Baltimore? You know what I mean? How many guns are really illegal or involved in drugs or shootings? A hundred and something? That ain't nothing. But Jay, let's just keep this thing all the way one hundred. Because that's what we do up here. Right. The all government the time. and police forces know good and damn well who are the connects and the head of these crime bosses and organizations selling and pushing these drugs. But they don't fuck with them because they have just as much power and influence as politicians. Right. And it ain't black folks doing this shit now. Right. And also, they know who's pushing these guns into the street, filtering them down to the black folks and we get our hands on them. Then they want to run their asses in the street and say, oh, look at all the violence in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Look at all the violence in Chicago. When you could cut the nozzle right off from the top if you go get the big guy yep. but they don't do that because they would lose power money and influence yeah i don't hear none of that mess i don't right. hear none of that mess because they know where the so drugs we, we coming from do that now. yeah they right. go for the right. low hanging right. fruit because they don't have good lawyers either Right. You know right. what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. It's about power, money, and influence. Yeah, and it's That's a it. numbers game. They want to say we took this many guns and arrested this many people, but in really you only need a handful of people. The the people, the main it. suppliers of yes. everything. You, you know what I'm saying? It shut it down. You could shut it down. But they don't want it to be shut down, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah. That's the mind trap we live yep. in. Yeah. I mean, look at all the judges, lawyers politicians, officers yeah. getting overtime who career is built off of getting the low hanging fruit. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. All of those arrests that's and stats it. and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Because that's, that's what it. they look at when they promote them and stuff. Yep. Right. And, and, exactly. And, and that's what Sean Sewell was like, let me just get my numbers so I, and, and just bypass this area. I yep. know it's dirty. I'm gonna keep my head down, do my work, and I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here as soon as I can. Yeah. Right. And speaking of which, Mooch, I'm gonna come your way for this one. Speaking of tax evaders, how about this bitch right here? Uh -huh. Vice mayor, you hey. had the police. You had the the uh, police commissioner who was sticking his neck out there, ladies and gentlemen. This guy really was sticking his neck out there to reform the police department as best he could. He was trying. And he told this woman, look, we're going to need some more money. 
She's doing the, thing, the song and dance that a good friend of mine who ran a very successful nonprofit, God rest her soul, taught me and my wife about. She said, Lamont, Crystal, when you're doing nonprofits or you're in politics and you're black, you have to make sure your books is twice as clean as the whites. Because when there's funding and money involved, the first place they're going to go look is audit your books. Audit your books. And this chick didn't have nothing clean because they sent her ass to jail for tax evasion for three years. Yeah. And she's up yeah. here making this She just got out recently. Speech. She up there making this passion speech. Oh, oh my, my babies, babies, my kids, blah, blah. It's easy to say that shit when it's somebody else's money because every time you get a grant, there's always little ways you can skim some money off the top See, See, the police is out there physically taking the money. And folks like this is in there doing that white collar mess I be telling y'all about. Scamming mm-hmm. money off the top, buying a $2,000 printer when you really just went and bought yourself some damn Louis Vuitton pocketbook at the house. Right. So, bought an HP. I'm going to you, J- <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you first, J Mo. Yeah. How bad was this for Baltimore with this chick who's supposed to came in and do something? And how you feel about this commissioner who eventually got fired and then they brought in a black police commissioner who did six the same months job. later. He didn't even let it long. The ink didn't even draw on his first check. Right, right. What, what, so, Missy, <laughs> Elliott say, what Missy Elliott say, Moochie, I don't want no minute man. Uh, <laughs> that's what he wants. Right. Minute man. 60 seconds. Um, like a yeah, Big Chief John Goodman over here. He knew they was coming for him when he got in the elevator. He said they just keeping me around long enough to put this stank on me. Stank yeah. on you. Yep. Straight up. Mm-hmm. They put the stank on yep. you. You know what I'm saying? And he was outcast. And they sure enough got rid of him. And he knew it. He should have retired and left. Time. Yeah, I would have res- I would have retired. I would, look at his age. He'd been working there long enough. He retired, and you saw that the second in command ended up retiring and leaving mm-hmm. after that uh, when they tried to put him on something like, man, I'm out of here. His hands was actually dirty. They was. was crooked. Yeah, he they was. was. His hands was actually yeah. dirty. But I actually really feel, um, you know what I'm saying, that the mayor was right. When she was in the boardroom saying find cuts from somewhere else. I'm not gonna cut like the the stuff for the community, like the community centers and uh the the wreck and all of that stuff that they had because what happens when young kids and young people don't have a place to go? They hang out on the streets. You know, so you gotta have some type of stuff for people to go to. And if you cut all of the programs, social programs, people aren't going to do anything other than hang out on the streets and possibly get involved in things they shouldn't or become victims of things that they shouldn't. And she was right. They could have found cuts because they was making a killing in police overtime. But he did have a point that a lot of officers don't want to police. And I can't cut the ones that actually do. It was a hard. I'm not saying it was an easy solution, but you can't cut the programs for people to keep them off the street at a young age. You know what I'm saying? So it was a tough one. And they should have tried to get more fun if they was doing their job and turning in all the money and, you know, things that they seized. It could have probably paid for some of these programs. But. You know, they was trying to find a way to pay for body cameras and stuff, saying they can't find it. You need to find a way. And that's a one-time purchase. But I think, you know, you got to operate it and run it and all of that stuff. So maybe it would have been a recurrent. Yeah. Software updates. Right, uh, right. Maintenance. You also got to have your uh, antivirus up there because you don't want Russia to hack them bitches and be putting... Russian models peeing on Donald Trump in there and stuff like that when you need the records of it. So yeah, you, you do got to There are some there are some small costs. Right, right. Costs associated with it. True, yeah. true. So yeah, that would have been a nice little thing. Um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm with her. We'd had to figure out something other than cutting my babies. Don't cut my baby. Yeah. I come for you. You cut my baby. 
Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> what you got? What you got? What you got? Moochie looking serious over here. I was I was surprised that um that she was dirty when I saw I was she was too. Like, oh, you was too. Yeah. I was too. Let me too. show y'all what Moochie talking about. Let me show y'all. Here when they go. came and arrested her. Yeah, I was I was surprised too. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, and then all the other people that went down, Wait. they ain't got nobody left. I just got to know, why was y'all surprised at this? Why? Why was y'all surprised? I didn't because see that looks, coming. Because she looks she looks meager and clean. Are you kidding me? Let me pull her picture back up here. She she got y'all shook with that meager, clean Michelle Obama policy. Let me tell y'all something. One thing, I wasn't look, paying her enough attention. Mad. I wasn't paying her enough attention to really think about it like that at all. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, damn. Yeah, that's how I was. Yeah, I wasn't like fooled like by her, but I wasn't paying enough attention to even think that that route. So when I saw right. it, I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> so, yeah. with, with, if y'all found out tomorrow that Barack Obama got three bitches on the side, what y'all gonna say then? Hey man, I don't put past what? put nothing past anybody that I don't know I and mean, ain't met. Yeah, uh, no, nah, don't go there. Point. Don't go there that's with that. That's where women go to line. He a man. He's he a, a dog. Man. He's a dog. Without grabbing him by the, uh, uh, by the coochie. Well, know? he was he, he was, was putting stuck. something Wait, in the cuckoo. Is? He didn't grab it. He look, stuck it. Look, this is what I can't figure out, Moochie. That man said, grab him by the P-U-S-S-Y, and oh. Christians still was voting for him. Yup. Because they cared so much about the kid issue. Because they care about kids before they born. But once they born, oh well, that's on you. You shouldn't have them. Grab them. <laughs> grab, them, grab them by the P-U-S-S-I. Do whatever you want to do to them once they get here. Just let them get here. That's stupid madness, man. That's stupid. That's stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. Because it's stupid. But I don't put nothing. People know that watch and know me. I don't put nothing past anybody whether they sports figures, athlete, anybody, businessman, because I don't know you, I ain't talked to you or have a relationship to knowing you somewhat, I don't know what your ass could really do and say, you know, your public persona could be clean as a whistle. At the end of the day, you could be putting up a front. You yeah, know? Exactly. Yeah. Because we, we live in a society that rewards people for faking it they make it. Yep. Yeah. And that's, I, yeah. that's pathetic. Yeah. I mean, literally, it's pathetic. Yeah. It's, it's pathetic. I even know I some YouTubers that be putting up fronts and, and it's fake that's as fake. hell. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't care that's about the people saying. that watch. They look down nope. on the people that watch. They subscribers. Yep. They think less of them. All kind of stuff. And, and I, of course, don't mess with them. So if you don't see me somewhere, uh, then you know. That might be something. Not always, but I ain't gonna roll yeah. with you if you looking down on people. Cause who the hell are you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes, he was. He was there. Now, yeah, he was at that convention. Some... Yes, he was there, man. Some of them sent there. tapes too. Yep. They let, me, did. let me say something. It was a beautiful convention. Beautiful oh, convention. God. We had nice guns. Nice guns. Beautiful guns. They were beautiful. Shiny. Shiny guns, clean, Ladies clean and guns, clean kill. Donald There's a J. clean Trump kill. With a good hand clean day. kill. On a good hand day, you got Donald Trump. So, Donald, have you slept with your daughter yet? Everybody I've been, wanna know. I've been working on it. If she wasn't my <laughs> daughter, I would have already been dating her, okay? Like I told her, one of the things that we do have in common is sex, okay? She's definitely my type. My type, but I didn't get to type the the PU yet, okay? But I'm working on it. I gave her a good job. So we'll see how it works, you know. Once you do stuff for them, they let you do anything you want. You can just literally go and grab it, fondle it. Ooh, it's very beautiful, very nice, warm, tight, Enjoyable. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump, get his ass out of here real quick. Get, get him out of here. Get, bring Jay back, man. I can't deal with this. Man, bring Jay back. Man, who was uh, that? 
<laughs> it was Donald J. Trump. He had a he had a real good tan this time. I don't know what happened because you got the army. But he, yeah. he looking like a brother this time. Yeah. No more so Agent Orange. I'm coming to Moochie on this one. So Moochie, we getting down to these sentences they deal out. Okay, we getting down these sentences. So they want because of Strapshire told on Gladstone, they dragged Gladstone in there. He put a little bit more ice on this cake. Yeah, because he was the one that planted that BB gun, and they asked him, "Why would you do that?" And he gave one of these answers you suspect these lonely white dudes would give that have been in the military, grew up in a house full of boys, because of brotherhood and camaraderie. Right. What? what? But you know what? It's yeah. true, though, because that's it's basically true, what the blue true. wall is, but it's dumb. It, 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 right, right. It is dumb. Because at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, you just put them before what? White people have been teaching us for years is sacred. Your family. Right. And what's more sacred than or the your law. family? Or the law. Your your your, your mm. God. Yeah. Is sacred. Your your God and your families. It's my family. But in this this point, he's gonna say, Oh, it's a brotherhood, so I had to help. You just put yourself in jail over brotherhood. And then we go to J- Wayne Stankin' Jake and Sinners. Look at this. He declined. Woo! To <laughs> Woo! We got a twenty five, boy. A twenty five. They, they only gave him twenty five years. Only. Only. Years. He at they least only. was in his forties, but and that's fair time. So that's eighty percent minimum that you got to serve. Eighty percent of that time. Yeah. So, okay, so he gonna do eighteen years. I whoop you do. No, I want his ass in there forever for the crimes he did. I mean, some of these people ain't going to be able to get their life back for what you did. So he gives up there. He didn't snitch. He gives this fake apology, Moochie, that keeps him looking like he's a, a police hero. And we know he been in there dipping in the chocolate, Moochie. Oh, how, how would his wife feel, Moochie, if she know that her baby daddy been out there on them back cage streets dipping in that chocolate? That's why he took the plea. Cause exactly. He said the bail bondsman dude was going to spill the beans. Yep. They would have found out about all the black pudding he'd been dipping into. <laughs> all the chocolate he'd been dipping into. She wouldn't have been mouthing, and he still I love you. To look like a family man. Yep. That's if, why he did what he did. Because she ain't going to come visit him. No, she's not he, gonna bring them kids up there. Hell no. She think well, no, that. she might and I don't even think I, I I can't even see it her still being married to him. I would like to know if they still married. I'll do some digging for you. I'll do some digging for you. And um that here's the part I'm gonna give to Jay. Jay, these sentences they dealt out. Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's next? That was that was bad. I still think he should have got more time. He got he, 15, though. He got 15 years. He, but and he look, didn't cooperate he got either. Fil- he got 15 years didn't snitch. And right. Check this out. Yeah. How the hell did Ram, who told everything. Man. Years, he told it all. He got 12 years. Woo. And the, the only thing I can think of is because. It's the shooting. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. But here's another one. Here's another one. Gondo. Oh, R. Kelly G. Man, <laughs> looking like Lakeith Stevenson. You got they, went and, they went and told everything to, and he got 10 years. I oh, thought it was nine. Years. It was 10. No, he got 10 it years. It was 10. It was 10. <sighs> and then the other two brothers, piece. they got seven. seven a piece. And I don't, they got, yeah, they got seven apiece. So they got Jay, the Talk to me about these sentences, Jay. What you disagree with? Are you like me? If you ain't gonna snitch, I mean, damn, man. I feel like yeah. Ram snitched and he's still doing twelve. Yeah. So they got hit with a nice amount of time still, and they they buried everybody. I hope they ain't all in the same prison together. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to be honest. They deal was still not really that good, but in the grand no. scheme of things, twelve and fifteen, that's three years of freedom still. And every you know, you can't nobody can give you a day back. 
I don't care if you Bill Gates or, you know what I'm saying, Elon Musk, you can't buy a day of life. You know what I'm saying? Get no time back. So, True. yeah, 12 years, that means 13 more years, possibly, that, you know what I'm saying, Wayne will be in there. Or if he only serve 80%, then what's 80% of 25? You know what I'm saying? Like 18 years or something like that? Something um, like that. Yeah, 19. I'm just doing it off the top of my head. I'm sure somebody will do it in the comments. But, um, you know, you and he got to do 80% of the 12, which, you know, is what? Eight to nine years. Oh. Um, so, or 10. He got 10, you said, or 12. 12? 12. 12. Who, who, who that? Ray? Yeah. Ray got 12 years. Jame yeah, yeah, so that means he going to do eight to nine years at least. Um, <clears throat> nine years or something like that, which, you know, damn. that Hey, I know how 10 years can go by and how long it could be. And, man, boy, woo. Time moves fast, though. Your life moves fast. It flashed before your eye. We all are old enough to have now seen the passage of time and realize seeing people young or seeing the events happen and be like, damn, that seemed like just yesterday. That was 10 years ago. That was 15, 20 years ago. And, man, your life moves fast, and next thing you know, it's over. So, yeah. yeah, that's that's a lot of time, man. I mean, I thought they was going to get five years or something man, when they was doing that's all that time. Yeah. yeah. The, way, the way they was snitching, they I got the big they fish. Get a little bit of time, too. Yeah, I yeah, thought they was going to have about five. Fish. Yeah. Even though um, the other two, they came last to the task force, and they, they got the least amount of time, I thought mm -hmm. they was going to get, like, maybe four or five years. I didn't think it was going to be seven. Yeah, shout out to good. I going to get that much. Shout out to good in the comments. Years. Yeah, good in the comments said 22.7 to be exact. So, <laughs> 22 <laughs> years and seven months. I hope you was accurate on your uh, math, good. I hope the good you math. You think he's in general <laughs> population? Hell yeah. He might be by now. If he's by smart, he would have went to... Uh, if he's smart, he should have uh, punched a guard and went to uh, <laughs> went solitary. to solitary. Yeah, but they probably put him in Kentucky because if he was in Baltimore, they'd have killed him. He'd be there with people he locked oh. up. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, he'd be done. And, he and we know prison. he's in federal prison in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. Now there's one more person we got to talk about who actually thought he was going to use white privilege to get up there in front of that judge and lie, talking about he was not stealing regular citizens' money. And it's this bitch ass right here, Herschel. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, boy. they wouldn't buy it. This is what he got. Thank you for coming. As the only two officers to go to trial in federal court, Daniel Herschel, Marcus Taylor were convicted and sentenced to eight Ten years each, Woo! and you know, you know what I got to say about that. Good, cause Herschel, your ass was taking money from regular people, and I'm not saying you should be taking the money from the drug dealers, but what I am saying is the regular people who had nothing to do with nothing. That there, there's no reason for you to be bothering them. They didn't have a reason to bother them. You was taking that money. I never forget how you did that boy who was in that sweet Impala just trying to go take his check and get food and pampers to put stuff in the house for his family. You caused that man to lose a job, lose his car, and I damn sure know he ain't getting no pussy that night. Boy. Well, look, he was the baddest apple of the whole bunch. Chose what? not to go to trial. I don't know about it. Go ahead, finish. You think he was worse than Wayne? Yeah. Yeah, with that pushing up on the on the on the on the person and saying you assaulted me, and he, then locking him up. He was different in a different way. As bad, so I get what you're saying. It like he hated people. If he hated a black man if they lived in a good neighborhood and was making an honest living. Yeah, he was really yeah, bad in a different way. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like he was an asshole yeah. and a dirty cop. 
in a different way more so than them. Although he did steal money too, so he was stealing. Yeah, he was stealing so too. yeah. But but go ahead and finish what you were saying. He, he, yeah. To me, he, he what? Okay, Wayne Jenkins and him, they both top tier buttholes. That's what... right, right, <laughs> right. It's just that Wayne Wayne seemed more free loving, uh, more approachable. Herschel just seemed unapproachable, cold, callous. You know, like he would have been, he literally would have been the slave master sitting outside the yeah. house. Yeah. Where, whereas Jenkins would have tried to be friends with the slaves. And that's right. what he did. He was right. like that with the, with the black co worker. Yeah, he's got right. that overseer mentality. Y'all seen 12 Years a Slave? Mm hmm. Sure have. Yeah, he's that overseer. And uh, Jenkins. I wouldn't say he was the Brad Pitt because he ain't going to probably help you get free. But he might have sat there and talked and, and laughed and joked and then beat you <laughs> and raped your wife but then come back and want to joke and talk to you sometime. Yeah, and then tell you he's not a racist. Right, right. Yeah, he ain't. He ain't. Sh- so, I wonder what jail he in because he got 18. Them two got 18 years. Yeah. He in Florida. Herschel in Florida. Ah. Some federal prison in Florida. <clears throat> That's smart they split them all up because a lot of people don't know what they in for, although they will find out eventually. Oh, um, heck they, yeah. They going to find yeah. out. Look, let me tell you something. I learned from Moochie. The birds be chirping everywhere, J-Mo. In jail, out of jail, under jail, on top of jail. The birds be chirping. Okay, like, I saw you jump. on TV last night. Right, especially once they get your last name and your name, they'll find out who you was if they, mm-hmm. you know, eventually. That's and if true. you've been fronting and lying, Wayne out and and when he was going to the yard. Yeah, yeah, but I think he was yeah. still in Baltimore then. He though. was still in Baltimore then. Yeah. But look at how they was shouting him out, and they was like, "Look, we we don't, we don't even want to protect you no more. We want you to go to Jim Pop." Yeah, they want him to get to I- beat. Did y'all see little buddy that was mopping the floor? I for sure thought that he was about to take that mop. <laughs> so soon. Where the sun don't shine on Wayne Jenkins, I thought the cops were going to let him do it. I thought that white mop was going to come out brown on the end. Oh. I thought he was going to unscrew that mop and beat the mess out of him with it. That's what I thought, too. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, boy. Ain't Somebody you that top in Baltimore? Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, the best. And this guy, uh, yeah, I know, this, right? This guy, like, bro, bro. So they be delusional. Wow. He, he's a narcissist. He's a narcissist, man. Narcissist for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an excellent show. If you haven't told your friends about it, and they want to just see just how corrupt the system we live in is, just how much the system is based on money, power, and influence. Make sure you go tell them to watch this so that HBO can bring us another one of these series. Maybe they can take the show they and do something take similar. Go on with it. Yeah. Or better yet, Moochie, why don't you find another city like Miami, Chicago? Um, hell, you could do a show about um, what was that? The governor of Chicago that had to go Blago. to Blago. Blago- Blagojevich. Yeah. Rod Blagojevich. Blagojevich. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then get a pardon from Trump. Blagojevich was a Democratic governor. So the fact that a the, the farthest right president we've ever seen, racist, radical, and all that, frees a former Democratic governor tells you just how much corruption is going on. Well, it, it's deeper you know, than that. It, it's about, you know what I'm saying, that, that complexion, you know what I'm saying, and other things, you know. In the end, they all corrupt. <laughs> And he probably, you know, he was busted for selling uh, Barack's, uh, you know, vacant senator seat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, saying yeah. whoever paid the most is who he going to appoint the seat to. Oh, yeah. He right. got busted for that. Like, in the, before Barack even got in, like, right before right. the time Barack got in office. Yeah. It just well, drug on that long. For, what he didn't get busted for that I think Trump let him out for was. Y'all do know that Trump did go to that orgy island with Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pictures of him. 
Goyevich was there too. Blow Goyevich. Yeah, Blago. Blago. Okay. Hey. So they probably didn't have little, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ple- shared different pleasure holes together. Mm-hmm. They probably had pee pee sessions. <laughs> Forget about <laughs> Jeff. We had show. pee yeah. sessions. <laughs> so yeah, HBO. You could do this series on Detroit, St. Louis. Uh, Rob Lagoyevich, you yeah. can do it in Florida. I mean, you can do this pretty much yeah. anywhere. We just want you guys to bring it back. Yeah. And so, having said that, Jay and Moochie, are y'all going to be watching P Valley? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Indeed. So, you know, Uncle Cliff is going to be there. Rule number 22.99. Oh, Always be ready for the pink. Put two in the pink and one in the stank. All right, there. Lamont. <laughs> so what day what day do y'all want to do our follow up review? Y'all wanna do it Monday, Tuesday, what day work for y'all? When Monday you cool. Monday? Yeah, Monday cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back on Monday night reviewing episode one of the Pink P Valley. So tune in then to that next sex is hell video. We are out of here. Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And I will see you guys on Friday night with Living Legend Lab. Peace. Deuces.